those lights are so bright. What's up? Lights so bright. Hey, yo. What's, how's the rest of that go? Can I contend? <laughs> That's a Toby Mac song. I like it. Can I contend? Um, separating what God is in versus what God allows is, is for, honestly overall uh, beneficial to my, I don't know, spiritual stability, if you will, just being able to recognize, oh, okay, God's not in that. Um, God allowed that. God's not in that at all, um, but he's going to use it anyways. Just being able to balance that all out. What am I contending with? Um, the spirit, uh, the spirits of the Antichrist. I packed a lot into like the first five minutes, and which is probably why I preached too long three times yesterday. So <laughs> to avoid doing that again immediately right out of the gate right now, what stood out first uh, before the horsemen, we'll get to those. But in the opening, the passage out of 1 John, um, and again, if you're watching spe specifically live, you can comment, you can question, um, post whatever you're thinking, whatever God is laying on your heart. We'll do our best to respond and, and even uh, answer accordingly. I, I think for me yesterday, and, and I even heard it whenever you were reading that scripture right out of the gate in 1 John chapter 4, uh, so many times people want to pin, like put a put a pin on people that like maybe they disagree with or dislike, and they automatically say, "Oh, that's the Antichrist," you know, like, "Oh, we're here, the end days." But I, I think it's I don't it's, even want to name <laughs> all the think, people that yeah. have been called the Antichrist yeah, over right, the yeah, years. Let's go through them all, but it, it's it's so interesting to hear people's reaction as you were preaching yesterday. Is that's the spirit of the Antichrist. Like, that's the spirit in which people walk. That's the spirit that's, that's here, that's prevalent. Like, that's, that's obviously, like, we're seeing in today's age, in the seasons that we've been walking through, the spirit is here. But now that we know that, now that we're seeing it, now that we're identifying it, what are we doing about it to guard ourselves, to prepare ourselves in the seasons that we're experiencing? Yeah, I think... You mentioned it in the first with the first horse, and then you mentioned it throughout the the tactic of the enemy to take something and make it a counterfeit that looks really similar, yeah. and make it look like really close to um, what is authentically God, what is authentically God's word, um, and so that discerning process of figuring out, okay, like is this? That's why you know we talk about discipleship and biblical literacy and a solid theology foundation knowing God's word knowing who God is because then it makes that distinction even easier okay I know that's not God I know that's not God's character I know that's not God's word so then automatically you can brush that off to the side instead of worrying okay is this is this God or not right and so knowing that and and um, I was watching uh, we were talking about this we talked about um, missions and stuff um, uh, at the uh, our district event Friday night um, he kind of, Pastor Scott kind of touched on a few things, but then I saw a video of a pastor who talked about having been in China and he was in an underground church for three days and there were 17 pastors and he was like, okay, how many guys, how many people do y'all oversee? And they like started at him and they're like, well, we're over 20 million people. And it's because they just didn't have that many people who knew the Bible and wow. you've like there's 1.3 billion people in China. So they're over like one province and that's 20 million people. Wow. And so, and he was talking about how they don't have Bibles. And when they go to prison for their faith, they like write down scripture verses, memorize as fast as they can before it's confiscated. And they have like whole chapters of books memorized hmm. and just how much they hide that word in their heart. And so then they, even more so, they can discern, okay, here's what, what, what God has and who God is and what's not. Yep. And just hiding that word and so you have that discernment, okay, like I know God. I know who God is. And so I know what he's not. Yep, it's good. Hey, th that, that would be the dig-in principle for the day thus far, certainly, um, is to take the opportunity to be reading the word of God. I saw Bo Dore. I don't know if you, you noted that or not. Bo was the youth pastor at Crossroads. He's now at the People's Church up in Oklahoma. But I saw that he read the Bible in 30 days. 
um, I would like to talk to Bo and, <laughs> and just how you planned that out, how yeah. you how you attacked that, um, and then ultimately accomplished it. But I did read he just how much he gleaned from spending that much time. You'd have to read at l like 20 some odd chapters a day. A, it's a lot a of reading. significant number of chapters with Old Testament, Psalms, Proverbs, and into the New Testament. You have to combine that up a lot. I don't know how many days, but, but just again, what is what is your Bible reading plan? If you don't have a plan, you're not reading. That's yeah. basically yeah. if you don't have a plan that you're following, then it's not probable that you're being very consistent. Very few people find consistency without a strategy. So what is your plan of, of reading the Bible and hiding God's word in your heart? Not just so that you won't sin against him, but that so you will recognize what he's in and what he's not in, what his spirit is allowing versus what his spirit is is actually like accomplishing. Yeah, what is yeah. God doing in this? Where is he? You had a thought? Well, our reading for this week um, <laughs> is on our Facebook page already, posted it this morning. Uh, it's by Rich Wilkerson Sr., and it's on honor. And it's on what honor is, what it isn't, how do we live a life of it, mm -hmm. what does that look like day to day. Five days, it's it's shorter devotions, but then it's got scripture to go along with it. So great place to start. I think he wrote a book. He mentioned the book that was coming out a couple of years ago at a men's conference for, for our state, a men's retreat. Hey, by the way, men's retreat, yeah, the little shameless plug there, coming up in uh, March, and we will post that this week. It's one of the things I meant to, uh, we'll post that coming up soon. So, going into the horseman, so that this doesn't get immaculately too long, going into the horseman. Um, all right. Which is how the seals are open. <laughs> yes, correct. Like, like this is the beginning of the three and a half years of hell on earth. This is the the breaking. Tribulation. Yes. So this is the breaking of the peace treaty yep. between the Antichrist and Israel. Three and a half years of peace. It looked like it was going to be okay, and now, well, here comes the here comes the flood. So, for. I told you Thursday, I, I always am so intrigued. And I actually saw someone, someone texted me, either that or it was in our, one of our group meetings, just the information, right? And some, some of this information can be very scary if you're not ready, if you're not prepared for it. But it's so intriguing to know, one, end times, but then like the four horsemen, and you hear about it. The thing that I feel, I know, right, it's coming, here it is. But I feel like our... In our naivety, we can read this and automatically we put the blame, we question God. Why is God allowing this to happen? Why Why is, man? I mean, obviously the Lamb, Jesus, is opening this up. Why? Why the wrath? Why the destruction? Why the, and I think honestly the answer comes to, well, this is, the church is not here anymore. The, the church is gone. His bride is with him. And I think a lot of people misunderstand that or don't even see it. And so the white horse, the deception. Unless you believe in a post-tribulation rapture, which yeah. would be very, very difficult. I know there are some, right, right, right. And, and that's okay. We can debate that another time. And if you're one, shoot me a message. I'll, <laughs> I don't know, send you something back. Um, but but it's, it would be very hard for me to believe in a post-tribulation rapture because then I would just assume that the saints are being subject to God's wrath again right. after he's already poured it out on Jesus. Yeah. Um, the reason that there is seemingly, again, just digging deeper because we have time, the reason to me that there are seemingly some saints or some saved people who are affected by this is because there will be people saved during the tribulation. Right. Like, just because you miss, I, in, in my interpretation of the totality of Scripture, just because you miss being caught up in the air with Jesus, which is a reference to the rapture, whether that's before the seven years of tribulation or in the middle of the seven years of tribulation, 
Um, it doesn't mean that you can't still receive salvation. It doesn't mean that you can't still deny the mark of the beast. Right. Um, I do believe, I believe, uh, maybe we could have a discussion with somebody that's more informed in eschatology than me in this area, and you may even be, be able to bring something to the table here. Um, but I do believe that once you take that mark, you're in big trouble. I'm not saying that there's not another opportunity. There does seem to be another 30-day window of grace at the end of the book of Revelation. There is that out there theologically. But, but that mark is the mark that determines whether you do or do not serve God, yeah. seemingly in the book of Revelation. The, whole, the, the entirety of that message or that piece of the conversation is there will be some people who live for God and who don't receive the mark, who suffer these horses attacks and the horsemen and the seals right. because their faith wasn't in Jesus during the... There will also be people born right. during that time period that that will be their season of serving God under persecution. I mean, well, that's not fair. Well, neither is it to be born as a Christian in Iran. Yep. Or Iraq versus being born as a Christian in Louisiana. Life's not fair. God's not fair. He's just. Yeah. And he gives just opportunity. White horse, disruption, deception. I, maybe I stirred something there. Well, I was thinking of the, the mark of the beast and talking about taking that mark. And we talk about how there's always spiritual precursors for the book of Revelation and what literally physically is going to take place. And, and you can see, not that people have made a deal with the devil and taken a spiritual mark in some sort of occultic practice. I mean, there is that yeah, there out there. Right? <laughs> but not everybody who's apart from Christ is that. Yep. And so you can discern, when we talk about discernment, you can discern those types of things. And that's why where we talk about um, having love for one another, mm -hmm. where Jesus, Jesus tells us in the New Testament, his mark is the love that we have for him and then for one another. And so every day we have the opportunity to spiritually and then physically through our actions choose, make that same choice. Okay, are we going to represent this or are we going to represent Christ? Are we going to represent our flesh and our selfish desires and, and a spiritual mark of the beast, if you will? Or are we going to have the mark of Christ, which is love for one another in our series of relationships and in a, a month of love, if you will, or however you want to Jesus phrase that? <laughs> Um, talking about that that the mark that love is the mark of Christ and we can choose that every day yeah I, I love my favorite part yesterday uh, is in all of this that we experience in all of this that we see we read about obviously it can be very frightening a little bit to say the least but I love that you pointed out that we're not to be scared we're to be prepared like it even if like this season may be ups and downs and we don't know what to do, we don't know where to go, we, we don't know the questions that are, that are coming for our future. For the United States of America, right? I don't have to be so scared to where I'm going out and buying a bunch of bullets and toilet paper and like that's, that's going to protect me. Although I love bullets. Yeah, come on. Well, I use toilet paper. <laughs> Those things are nice, but, but I'm preparing spiritually. Hmm. Not just physically. I'm not preparing. I'm not just preparing my household. I am pre preparing this household, the the thing that that houses the Holy Spirit spiritually, reading, praying, those things. Am I growing in my relationship with Christ when when times like these are getting the the toughest? It, it's it is interesting that when things like shut down or overly concerned from Y2K to 2008 stock market crash to COVID closing doors last last March. Um, you think everybody storms the grocery stores um, and they're, they're seeing what all supplies they can gather because right. their thought is, I need to survive. I need to survive physically. Yeah. Which is important. Like, I wanted water and, and food and, and all those things at that time, too. But who grabs a Bible? Well, now, I know that that's, like, I know that that's excessively Christianese there. But but who who automatically thinks, okay, wait, is my heart right? Yeah. Who automatically goes... Man, have I been have I been spending enough time? Like, am I am I spiritually ready? Right. 
for, for what is happening right now, for what is about to happen. We automatically, we stockpile physically, which I think you should. That, that's good. That's fine. I, I ran all over the place filling up gas cans to run generators. I, I sent my family north. <laughs> like, I can't run a church and a five-star hotel on a generator. Y'all got to go. <laughs> so, but like we did some physical things to prepare. But what are we doing to prepare physically yeah. right now, spiritually right right now right. for what else is on the way because there's something else on the way and that was the point my what i meant to communicate i got a little bit sidetracked by my frustrations with social media mm -hmm. recently in the eight o'clock just because when you share silly things and then you have something spiritually significant to say it's not heard because it's lost in all the silliness that you've already shared and you can't go and try to be kind to somebody when you've already vented who you really are on social media and now you don't have a voice because they already read how you really feel. Yeah. But preparing, like, hey, this is here. These spirits, yeah. these horses, if you will, the fear, the violence, the chaos and commerce, the disruption, the deception, and even, I mean, disease and death, like it's here. Yeah. How are we handling it? How are we preparing for okay. what's on the way? And what are we doing to win people? Yeah, our series scripture is Jeremiah twelve five, talking about if you, if you, if the foot soldiers, if temporary things of life have worn you out, then how can you contend with the horses? How can you deal with the eternal things, the things that truly matter? And and we've been discussing this uh, idea of temporary versus eternal the past several weeks through across a couple of different series, honestly. And and I start to think about okay, like we really get so bent out of shape over politics and our things in society and community and and then we read revelation and we like we we're Man. all excited about jesus coming back and it's like oh yeah. well but do you like he said all of this will happen why is this bother so much and it's and we have this idea of god's goodness and how he's going to save us and then we see christians in iran literally being beheaded yeah. we see Peter being crucified upside down, Stephen being stoned, and it's like, okay, do we really believe um, to the point of sacrifice, to the point of giving everything? Yeah. Like, yeah. are we truly that committed, or are we just doing it because it's what we grew up and were taught, or because it's it's comfortable, because we told everything would be good and easy, right. and really drawing that line and searching ourselves and, and understanding, okay, like, this is real. What Revelation says is real. Like, this is going to happen. And so are we prepared in our commitment? Are we prepared not just physically for the things that are going to happen, yeah. but spiritually? Are we prepared? Like if, if something were to happen, God forbid, and all of a sudden Christianity is outlawed in the U.S. and they're raiding houses, are, are you prepared to make that stand and that commitment? Because there are millions of Christians who are doing it across the world every single day of their lives. Yeah. Are we really prepared to do that? That's when I hit, see the, am I, I'm not scared, I'm prepared. That's like... That's where my mind goes. Am I prepared to pay the ultimate price? Do I believe? Yeah, but what about my ever? rights? <laughs> my rights. This is America. Yeah. No, this is the earth. Yeah. And and I agree. I'm I'm for, I'm for patriotism. I, I thank God for our military, for our first responders. Anybody that knows me that has served in that or is serving in that capacity knows that. Um, with that said. I, I don't get to lay down my Christianity um, in order to fight for my rights. I, I, I don't I can't lose <laughs> I can't lose my influence in order to gain a certain privilege or again a certain right. Christianity, which is where we're going in the series, Christianity, just like marriage, just like friendship, just like any other relationship, this is all about me laying down my rights. Yeah. Um, the ends don't always justify the means. No, uh, and I, th I think being careful and cautious, and again, that this Sunday we're going to contend with covering. That was this past Sunday is the final point, and you can talk about that before we go. And then this coming Sunday, it's contend with care, contend with grace. Contend with joy, um, and I might they just how I'm going to do that in 35 minutes is going to be interesting <laughs> too because those are 
those are so dynamic yeah. of being able to contend there. But I think you either do it or you don't. And, and if you don't, then this is an eternal issue either for you or the people that you could have had influence with. Um, and if you do, then I, I, there is some surrender that's going to come along with it. There is some laying down of your rights and your attitude and your just as easily offended inside of the church walls as you are the society that you're so sick of hearing how easily offended they are. Um, and again, this is not just an at you kind of a thing. This is us fleshing this thing out as well. Yeah. So the final point from the message of contend with covering, I, I know you guys listened to it four times. You had some thoughts there. Let's try to wrap up. So you, you said this in third service, and I, I wrote it down immediately. Uh, and you just made mention of it. Don't remove your covering and call it venting. Mm. Don't remove your covering and call it venting. Uh, just because you're having a moment of frustration or just a moment in general, uh, stepping out of that that realm of accountability or that that realm of covering, can can you speak to the the young person out there that? Really, it gets to the the thought of well, I don't have to be obedient, but you know, I got to honor. So the the young person that may justify that to their parents, like, oh well, I don't have to, you know, I don't have to necessarily obey you. Pastor Chris said the only time know. that you don't the only time that you don't get to obey authority that yes. you don't have to obey authority, be they governmental, civil, spiritual, and, and or parental. The covering. Um, the only time that you get to disobey is if they're telling you to do something that is immoral or unbiblical. Yeah. Yeah. That is that is the time that you that you don't have to do what they're telling you to do. They're, they're, and we may come to that place. I mean, there's going to be some choices where we're going to take your tax exemption away. Okay, well, you take my tax exemption away. Um, this is the standard that, that we're going to abide by. Right. And, I, and I love every person and I care about their soul for eternity, um, but their soul is not more important than the principle. Like this person, yeah. uh, as important as they are, they are not more important than the principle. So that's the only time, that's the only time that I get to disobey right. an authority and or an authority figure is if they are telling me to do something that I know is illicitly unbiblical yeah. Yeah. one the other thing that you said I believe only in third service was the more my authority is like Nebuchadnezzar the more I must become like Daniel and so the thought behind that is a lot of times we we fight fire with fire oh, well they're going to go to this level well we're going to take it to this level <laughs> but you fight fire with water mm-hmm. yeah, you don't fight fire with fire and so the more that the world descends into what we see in Revelation the more we should become like Daniel, like John, like Peter, in becoming more like Christ mm-hmm. and yeah. the opposite. And the more that the world becomes like this, the more that our witness stands out even more. The more that it's it's easier to portray the opposite and it's not mixed anymore because we that line is being drawn for us. And so we have to choose that. And, and then a, a big way that we do that is the way that we treat our authority, the way that we handle our covering the way that we handle our Nebuchadnezzars, if you will. And Daniel was found faithful. And Daniel was the one, we forget, Nebuchadnezzar like came and raided Israel and took slaves. And then Daniel, by his faithfulness, saw Nebuchadnezzar declare God as Lord, like mm-hmm. as his Lord. Yeah. And Nebuchadnezzar had to go through some stuff. That's a really interesting <laughs> story if you go read that. Losing his mind and all kinds of other things. But eventually he declared God as his Lord all because of Daniel's faithfulness and the more that he was surrounded by people like Nebuchadnezzar, the more he stayed in his faith and grew even more like Christ. You were not created to contend alone. You were created to contend with covering. And uh, hey, one of those coverings, small groups, um, starting this coming week, if you haven't already signed up for a small group, you can. Yep. You want to say something? Or you just... Yeah, small groups, freedom groups, Sunday uh, uh, at all launches, so sign up at unitschurch.com. It's not too late. 
Um, I get people all the time. You know, it's like we got a week left of small groups. Hey, is it too late to sign up? So, no, no, no. We can sign up all week. Yeah, we'll even let you on. sign up into the first or maybe even the second week. But if you miss much past that, yeah, as far as freedom groups kind of, go, you, yeah, freedom groups you, are you starting miss to the catch up. you miss the uh, the meat of some of those messages. So hey, sign up and then take advantage of Wednesday night as well. Just a reminder: there's 13 people still watching. Um, take advantage of Wednesday night. We record those Bible studies every week. Our students take over our campus, the so students and children. So we have child care uh, on Wednesday nights. You can bring your student. You can bring your elementary age, pre-K. We'll have child care available for those nights. And then you can watch the Bible study. You spend time alone with God. You can sit outside and watch and read and pray. You can go have coffee with your friend and or spouse or whatever that looks like. Take advantage of the online opportunities that we're still having even though we may not have as many large group opportunities, the objective, the reason we do that is because we want you to take advantage of that time and develop personal relationships with God and with one another at the same time. Do you have final thoughts? Yeah, I was going to say we're, we're going to have a video this week, uh, probably Wednesday or Thursday, um, with some highlights from our Freedom Conference, and now I'm going to explain... Uh, what freedom groups really are and why you should join. So be looking for that if you have questions. Uh, yeah, look out for that on Facebook. See, Universal, we love you. Oh. Fun. Yep, good. I thought that was you. Well. Yeah. No, bro. <laughs>